Well, welcome back, everyone, to the Zero K May 2018 1v1 tournament. I remain your host, Dominic, along with Kingstat, or sorry, along with Pokemoko. We're going to be watching a match between Kingstat and Rar on Adansonia for the quarterfinals. Kingstat and, and Andy, actually. But yeah, Kingstat and Randy. Yes. Why do I keep saying Rar? <laughs> I know I have a hard time with names that start with SC, like a sk sound, but <laughs> I, no, seriously, remember when like Scorcher and Scrubber and Slasher, Scallop. actually, it's not SC. Scallop, yeah, it's like I was always confused in those units. I don't know what's wrong with me that way, but yeah, that was that was the thing I did. I think everyone confused Scallop and Scalpel. It's like they were right, yeah, that's easy. That's easy to people. confuse. But I would confuse yeah. Slasher and Scorcher and Scalpel, and it's like, yeah, I'm so glad that was changed to Fencer and Dagger. <laughs> Thank you, devs. Thank you, dev team. Yes, yes, and they the, they renamed uh, Leveler into Reaper, which is not Reaper, which was renamed into Minotaur. Yeah, but then I keep confusing Reaver and Reaper, even though like they changed Warrior to Reaver, <laughs> and it's like okay, that's cool, and they changed Reaper to Minotaur, and okay, that's cool, but then it's my head that Reaper is still Reaper, not Minotaur. It's like that's <laughs> a mixed bag. Anyway, we are in Ansonia. Randy is going for Amphib Factory. Kingside going for Shieldbot Factory, and I. I kind of agree with Kingstad here. I mean, this map is good for Amphib to, to some extent, but I mean, other than ducks and scallops, not a whole lot is actually useful underwater. So, shields, bandits, bandit versus duck, bandit versus duck wins, bandit versus archer. It's a bit more even matchup. I am quite surprised that no one went hovers. Hovers are usually the go-to on this map. Um, I don't know. I mean, the thing is, you're right. They're not a bad choice on this map. But I haven't seen anyone use hovers in a long time period. They're just way out of meta right now. I think largely that because yeah, they don't have a whole lot. Like, what do you have? You have daggers, which you need to get a bunch of in order to be able to kill anything. And you do have scalpels, yes. But scalpels got nerfed scalpels a bit a while back, are, and no yeah, one really uses them. Yeah. But and then maces, maces are a bit insane at the moment. A right. Bit, like... Yeah, but at the same time, they're also really slow and predictable, and you can kind of work around them with, with skirmishers. So, yeah. I mean, there are there are options in the Hovercraft Factory, but no one's really been using it in a while. Maybe someone will find a use for it. Golda did use Hovercraft for a long time back in the day. So it could very well just be someone finds out some strategy that works in the Hovercraft becomes back in the meta. I just want to know when Randy is going to switch because shields just murder Amphibs. Exactly. That's, that's that I'm thinking that too. Like, like I said, bandits will beat ducks. No problem. Archers... More of an even matchup, but I don't see a switch over from Archers from Randy. And I guess you could go for boys, but then boys and Grizzlies just get racketeered to death. So there's not like a whole lot of options I can think of that the Shieldbot Factory doesn't have to deal with whatever the Amphib Factory tries to pull off. And at this point, we are seeing exactly that. There's the Duck. There's the Duck versus Bandit. I mean, granted, one of the Bandits might die. Not even! Two Bandits have enough damage to stop the Duck from hitting more than once. The only downside, Bandits do not auto-repair. So, that one bandit there, it's gonna die. But that's fine, it got its value. Like, really, two bandits... Yeah, this is exactly... This is what Hokumoko and I are talking about right here. The way the bandits are fighting the ducks? Yeah, they win. Every time. I'm really kind of surprised Randy is not going for archers, because archers for the Amphib Factory right now are the go-to raider unit. Yeah. Look how the conch, it is so armored that... The duck is actually... It gave it enough time. And yeah. very nice micro. Ooh. The bandit hit between... Like, the, had the conch between it and the duck. Yeah, that was clever. Because, I mean, you always want to get rid of the workers if you can. That's always the most useful thing to do. Because it takes a while to rebuild the workers. That means they're not building military units. And it also means they're not able to reclaim or build buildings in the same time. So, very nicely done by Kingstad there. Although, I gotta say... And Lotus also... just in time. Yeah, very, very perfect. It still might lead to a dead metal extractor, but that's at the cost of two bandits, so totally worth it. I mean, you consider the reclaim available, that's actually more than paid for. The metal extractor, that is. Well, when the alternative is a dead conch and another dead max, it's, it's yeah. definitely worth it. As opposed to being able to reclaim back the value of the max. Like, nicely done there, Randy. Although, Okamako, didn't you play a bunch of Amphib back in the day? I thought it was your factory for a while. Yes, and why don't I play them anymore? Fair enough. <laughs> this, this is the question. When when I uh, kind of, well, 
try to convince Google Frog to to make Amphibs, um, I don't know, viable. Uh, what <laughs> happened was the lobster. Um, oh yeah. And it's not really what I expected, but well, such is life. I mean, to be fair, no one really uses the lobster or the gin. I've seen Google Frog use the gin once. I've hardly seen anyone use the lobster. I I haven't really seen anyone experiment with the lobster. I don't know if I just haven't seen those games or what, but I wouldn't be surprised if there's something missing just because the Amphib factory, people tend to use only like two or three of the tools of a factory that's theoretically fully kitted out. It is not fully kitted out. There is no artillery. True. You, okay, there is that, the yes. The skirmishers are lacking. The, the only real um, answer you have to, let's say, rogues is grizzly. Like... Check out how much a rogue costs and how much grizzlies cost. It doesn't that's make sense. Fair, 120 versus 2,000. Yeah, I mean, that's. I think the thing I noticed with Amphifactory is that the skirmish, the concept of skirmisher as a role is split between archer, boy, and duck. So it makes it kind of weird because you have three kind of skirmisher units and none of which is a superly dedicated skirmisher, which might work in theory, but it doesn't really work in practice as a way of making that work, because you have sort of this half raider, half skirmisher, or two half raider, half skirmishers, or I guess half riot, half skirmisher in the case of the archer, and then you have the boy, which is more of a dedicated skirmisher, but also doesn't have has some range, I think like 600 range. No, 450 range, he has nothing for range. Yeah, you're right, yeah, the range in the boy is just nothing compared to most skirmishers. And it's slow. Yeah. That too. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's the... I don't know what you really would do with the Amphib Factory. I think the only thing that's... Like, their speed is, I think, meant to be countered by the use of Lobster and Gin. And then you use that to make up for the lack of speed by putting your your units right in the middle of the opponents. But then there's also the lack of power once they get there, so... Oh, there's some for Archers. Yeah. Randy is starting to get a very nice metal advantage. Um... I mean, that's certainly working in their favor. They have the metal advantage. They can use that to just outproduce their opponents. Even if they are playing the Amphifactory, they can get a few Grizzlies up and get half a dozen Grizzlies, and that can still win the game. Whereas Kingstead, on the other hand, they're just... They're saying a Felon really early, actually. Surprise! Where's the support forces? Normally, when you have a Felon, you have a bunch of support forces. Thugs and sometimes Convicts. Use those around the Felon in order to provide more shields so the Felon's shield-using shield beam can actually do his job. But we don't see anything. It's just the Felon on its own. Not really sure what Kingstad is going for here. I'm sure as well. Because the thing is, for the jump out for the shield out factory, felons are a really good way of getting. Like, they're a really good riot unit for dealing with a lot of light opponents. They're amazing, but boys are not light opponents. That's that's going to drain pretty much the entire shield off that felon just to kill one boy. And. Even more, boys' uh, shots have slow damage, and slow damage oh, yeah. is usually in very big amounts, and a third of the slow damage uh, costs shield energy. Yeah, so basically, it's not like, look at the damage number, it's not 150 damage to shields, it's 150 plus a third of 250, so yeah, it's, it's a fair bit of damage, like 70, it's like 225 damage on those shields, and there's only 1600 shields, and the shields get drained as they're attacking, so yeah, that's not really a great mix. Kingshead also having a really tough time with their commander, though. Randy able to surround it, slow it down, and keep it completely locked down. There's not much you can do. It wasn't a time with the bandit to get through there, but the felon is a bit too late to get around the back. If Snitch trying to do his best to harass and get around, maybe stop something, but no, it's not going to help out. Kingshead loses their commander, and with that, Kingshead loses a lot of their frontline presence. That felon is also going to go down. Really, I'm like I said, I'm not sure why, where the support forces were. There are the thugs, but the felon was just out in front way too far, and I'm really curious where this rally point is. Oh, the shield bot rally point was set up front. That's probably why the felon moved so far forward before any support forces could come in and help it. Ah, that has got to be painful. I mean, at the very least, these snitches are doing a pretty good job. They are managing to find some value. It's just whether or not they can find value now against these boys. If they can find the right position against the boys to stop them from getting into the rest of King Tad's forces, then I could see Randy getting turned around a bit. But even then, Randy has such a huge economic advantage, I don't see that happening quickly. Notice the grid of solars. When it didn't build, um, uh, how do you call it, solars in a flower around the mechs, it used it to connect since the very beginning. Yeah, that's 
not totally unusual. I mean, you see that with solar sometimes. You usually see that with winds, but that's going to be extremely effective. I mean, once Kingstack gets that fully connected, or sorry, Randy gets that fully connected, that's going to... I mean, even now, it's already getting them, like, eight overdrive per second. Decent chunk of their economy, really. Ooh. <laughs> and those thugs. Randy, at this point, basically will have an army to push in. Their commander... How much upgraded? Level 4 commander? Really? Wow! Level 4 plus beam laser. They had plenty of money. I guess they could afford it. And the Thunderbird is now on, which is just going to murder whoever oh. is trying to stop it. Yeah, Thunderbird's Randy. pretty much the counter to shields. Like, as a factory. <laughs> or at least as a concept. Like... Yeah, bubble like shields this. do not last against the Thunderbird. The Thunderbird stuns them out. We were talking about abilities dealing extra damage to shields. Yeah, that's one of those situations. The disarm damage is just it just wrecks the shields, and then it gets disarmed. And disarmed units do not have shields. Because the shields do nothing. They just stop. So at this point, Kingstad in a bit of a last stand situation. I don't see them necessarily having the money to do this. They do have theoretically the production capacity to build up, but most of the folks entirely on the gunship factory. Not even building any more shields, despite the fact that they could use the shield bot factory to apply a few more units to this field. But I don't see that happening. It looks like it's entirely going to be just throwing out harpies and doing what they can. Quite frankly, I don't think that's necessarily going to be enough, but I might be surprised. It pretty much has to be. No, this Oof. is very much over. Well, Valley never coming in from Kingstad at any rate. We managed to at least... Try some things. Also, getting around the back of the blast wings, at least to tr if they manage to survive this attack somehow. Bit of a miracle if they do, but if they do manage to survive it, Kingstead does have a fair bit of harassment going around the back lines to at least slow down some of Randy's economy. But they're going to have to really push hard, and they do not think they can. That is, that OL, oh well, that is a towel's OL. Oh well. We have a towel. Mm, definitely. And that is going to be game. Listen, I was surprised, and no real switch. Um,. I think it was because Randiv managed to definitely, you know, expand much faster than Kingstead. Pretty much. I mean, look at the metal income. It was, it was even at the beginning, and then Randy just kept going for it and going for it and going for it, and Kingstead couldn't really harass as well as they wanted to. I mean, I felt like Kingstead was expanding reasonably well. It's just that extra 10 metal per second coming in for the majority of the game. That did the trick. Also, notice that Kingstead spent more in defenses. Um... And oh, yeah. this is an amount that didn't go into units. Um, since like, Randy managed to hold with without a lot of sin base and without many similar stuff. Yep. Well. well, anyway, that is that. I don't know what other matches, if there's a matches going on right now. But I think I'm going to... I might as well check, I suppose. I mean... Maybe there's something else happening in the quarterfinals. Hmm? Drone and Rar? Oh yeah, it's still going on. Sure, let's do that. Alright, Drone versus Rar it is. Any yeah. guesses whether we're going to see um, Rar Troll coming? Well, probably. I mean, that's they always do. Well, let's see. So we have Rar going for the Amphifactory, and I can't control what's going on here. Rar on the Amphifactory. It looks like Drone... What is Drone going for? Tanks. Drone over tanks. Okay. Not a bad combination. But... Rar. Are you going for troll comm? I don't see any troll comms, actually. It looks like everything's pretty much okay. I mean, it's also kind of hard to follow, because for whatever reason, I can't use my camera properly. This is actually really weird. Can I change how the cameras are handling the engine? Or input events? Whatever. Anyway, it looks like at this point we do have a fairly early Grizzly coming in from RAR. I mean, same thing as before. Amphib versus tanks now. Drone managing to take a fair, a fair majority of the map coming in, but at the same time, RAR does have the Grizzlies up. They can stop some of these tanks coming in here, although with the, with the Cyclops coming in to try to stop that, that could very well fall apart quickly enough. Yeah, two Goliaths, or two Cyclops rather, versus two Grizzlies. I I put my money on the Cyclopses. Um, throw nicely sends the forces to get the Echo instead of uh, going at the army. Yeah, that'll bait Rar in, and that of course means that Drone could do whatever retreat micro if they wanted to. 
Well, at this point, the Cyclops is taking some damage, and the Stardust is doing a decent job. But yeah, that's the thing. So at this point, it is going to be Drone pretty much taking care of all of Rar's economy on the western side of the map. Rar doesn't have much else, and Drone is gradually pushing in as well. Stardusts to get rid of everything. Heck, they can just move the Welders in here and have them tear apart the Metal Extractors. They don't even need the Stardusts. But they're going for it anyway. Not to mention coming in with some Nemesis on top of that. So, man, Drone is coming in oppressively hard. While at the same time... Ooh, Rar, switching over to Shieldbots. So at least that'll provide some rogues. I'll be able to get rid of the Cyclopses reasonably well. The Stingers will cause a problem there, though. The rogues might be able to get rid of the Stinger reasonably quickly, but they will lose a few of their number in the process. Grizzlies will be able to get Stingers. Yeah, the Grizzlies, Grizzlies are on that. They got that sorted. Actually, the light unit is being used to stop the Cyclops. It's a very smart play. A lot of anglers for that, too. I mean, that will definitely stop any gunships, any nemesis that try to come in here. But more so as shields, making sure the Grizzlies do not die. Not a terrible idea. They are cheap. 180 metal compared to the Grizzlies 2000. Definitely worth doing. But at the same time, it does mean that there are less than a wave anti here once things come down to that. And at the same time, sheesh, Rar has lost everything in the western side of the map. They're basically entirely depending on this attack here. This army managing to push through their opponents and tear everything apart, and there's three Cyclopses to push through. So good luck with that, Rar. It's going to be tough. It's possible, theoretically, if played perfectly, but it's going to be tough. At the very least, you have the rogues that are able to do something to the Cyclopses. Actually, one of the Cyclopses okay, might go down. Cyclops is going down. Yeah, the next Drizzly Shot will take that down. If they get there. No, it is going back, and probably way back. Yeah, it's... There it is. No, it is it is gone. And at this point, actually, this entire defensive firebase could be going down. Drone could be losing this. I mean, the fireplace. The rest of the game is really in their hands. I mean, they've gotten most of the map, so it's not a huge threat as far as the game as a whole, but definitely in terms of this firebase, there's, there's a bit of a tough situation going on. And that is indeed lost. Rar pushing in, possibly getting rid of another Cyclops, and more importantly, so much reclaim. There's so much reclaim, it's just a matter of whether or not it gets used. And I don't see any workers being built yet, but Drone losing their commander. Another fairly big blow. Drone, however, did have storage set up to deal with that just in case. But with all the reclaim up front, if that can be grabbed, if that can be claimed properly, that should work. At the very least, Randy can push back and maintain a fairly strong firebase in front of the base. But at the same time, the Nemesis is coming in here. The Anglers are way out of position to deal with them. And there's really nothing to stop them. This, there's a Stardust, maybe. That's about it. Oh, and the Thresher. But even then, that's against this number of Nimbuses. I don't see that working especially well. Ooh, actually, never mind. Actually, no, the Nimbuses were too did. close. Yeah, they were too close. They're getting hit by the splash damage. That's working extremely efficiently. And the Stardust is being excellent AA. Yeah, no, when you consider that the Nimbuses were on top of each white. other, that was... The, between the Flak Cannon and the Stardust, that was perfect. Rar managing to defend that. How much Reclaim do they have now? In their main base alone, they got 2,000 reclaim thanks to those Nimbuses. So, nice donation from, from Drone. Wanted to make sure the game, game stays relatively even. I appreciate the sports personship. It's definitely a definitely a noble move. I don't necessarily agree as far as actually trying to win the game, though. And Rar has taken full advantage of this, too. Like, seriously, like, this entire army's been pushing out from about three minutes ago and has not stopped. They've lost a few of their number in the process, but still, there's just so much damage that's been dealt by this army pushing forward. Drone basically losing the entire center of the map. The only thing really keeping them in any position here is these two blitzes. But there's no reclaiming, reclaiming constructors yet, which is... Right, well, not out there. Missing. There is up here. Rar is reclaiming a bit in, this, in their base. 17 metal per second in their base. Super safe reclaim, which I can say, yeah, that's something to go for first. I agree with that. Wouldn't mean It would be nice to see one of these conscious go out, and they will eventually. They actually do have that on cue. Not to mention, it's like I said, the amount of harassment, the amount of push coming in, the amount of power coming in that RAR has, on top of the fact that their economy is going to be reasonably even for the time being. Yeah, drones actually, there's a game again. Although I do see drone having several Cyclopses coming in, this is a good position. There's not a whole lot in the back lines to defend the Cyclopses. Everything's going on in the back. RAR is essentially going to try to destroy drone's base, but that means they can't easily defend, and they're now realizing this a little bit too late. Forced to try to maybe flank the Cyclops, that's about the only option they have right now. At the same time, the Blitzes over in the southwest are being destroyed, so there is that. The, the Scallop is doing its job reasonably well. 
it's just a question of whether or not that is going to be enough. Because at the very least, the Cyclopses are being pushed back. RAR, forced to not actually attack drones base directly, but at the very least, is able to do a bit of damage. Have a few of the rogues to, you know, push forward. Just harass a bit. While the rest of their army is able to defend the Cyclopses. Um, drone is sending a few harpies to get the rogues. Yeah, but at this point, there's so many anguish there. That's the thing. Like, getting those rogues? Okay, sure, those rogues might go down. They've already dealt a decent amount of damage, but... Sure, they might go down, but they're opening things up. And now that's... That is army value that's not attacking the front lines. Granted, there are anglers there that would stop it. Kind of would be nice to have some anglers with the rogues to at least stop any potential harpies from coming in here. But hey, damage is built. Two metal extractors are down. A few wind generators as well. And a few solar plants. Oof. That's the thing I was talking about. The Cyclops is you got to be careful with those. They are designed to get rid of heavy units like Grizzlies. However, there's also three Grizzlies, one of which is under production, granted, but still, there's two Grizzlies on the front lines. On top of all the rogues, on top of all the anti-air. So Drone has to push through this on the ground, or they lose their entire air force, and their air force is coming into the Harpies, trying their luck, and those anglers are going to make that very unlucky for them. Oh, anglers and vandals, all the Harpies going down for nothing. Three of them lost for free. And this, the Cyclopses are still pushing in. There's quite a few of them, too. Five in the front lines. Str a couple Striders worth of metal here. But the Grizzlies are just making sure that's not even going to happen. The Grizzly Rogue combination. We were talking before about how Amphib versus Shieldbot is a tough matchup. But Amphib and Shieldbot together, that's not a bad mix. Yeah, it looks good. The, the Alpha on the Anglers is just amazing. It is ridiculous. Yeah, four rockets fired in quick succession, dealing... How much damage did they even deal? I... Oh yeah, dealing 150 each, so that's 600 damage within a few seconds to basically anything. Any of those harpies are going to die to one angler. So, yeah, that's not worth it. That is really unsafe. And we are seeing... We aren't seeing all on the way of air assault coming in from drones. They do have some wasps, which is a bit risky, but the main thing, like I said, is they have to worry about ground forces. They have to get in somehow to this ground force that RAR has built up. And if that can be stopped, then drones still have a chance to push in, but RAR has been slowly but surely... Doing a lot of damage, pushing out, reclaiming, just taking advantage of everything that's been set up. And while the Harpies are managing to come in and deal some damage around the back lines, there's anti-air for that too. Though not as much, not, the, not as much in the way of Anglers, actually. The Harpies could get in the back lines of Rar's base and start tearing it to pieces. Granted, that's at the Except same time the front lines the going. Thresher, the thresher, the th Except thresher, for the, the Thresher, thresher. you're right. Although even then, the Thresher actually isn't that close. They can help a bit, for sure, but it's not going to be destroying everything. And The Vandals mainly are the anti-air. Just look at it. Everything is murdered here. Okay, never mind. Yeah, the Vandals came in back. That Vandal, Vandal Thresher Stardust combo is still enough to make sure the Harpies cannot get back here. While at the same time, the front line just gradually being ground down. I mean, drone, Drone's pushing back, and they're making sure that the Grizzlies have to respect the Cyclopses. But the Cyclopses still can't move that far, and they are very expensive. Like, there are 2,000... They're a little more expensive than a Grizzly. So every Cyclops dying is that much more much that much more value for RAR than losing a Grizzly. Even though Drone does have a slightly stronger economy, RAR, their, with their reclaim, has managed to basically make up for that. And now Drone just decided to go Grizzlies. And we're going to have Grizzlies versus Grizzlies. This is going to be fun. Yeah, although, on the other hand, RAR has so many more Grizzlies they've already set up, and have the Rogues on top of that. I could see this working, maybe, but honestly, it feels like a bit of a last-ditch effort, and I'm thinking RAR has something of the army value upper hand right now. Not to mention the attrition upper hand. Yeah, I'm not sure if it's the last-ditch um, effort. Basically, think about it. Um, if you have an economic advantage, and you have a problem with an enemy unit, just mirror. You're going to have more. Oh, that's fair. Yeah, that's actually a fair point. It's a no-brainer. And actually, you're right about that, too. Drone is setting up a few more gri Grizzlies. They just about got their third, while RAR only has three on the front line. They're mostly focusing on rogues, honestly. Well, this is an entirely Grizzly-based army coming in from Drone. That is that is their focus right now. That is everything for them. Just get all the Grizzlies in the world on top of the Cyclopses. That could theoretically work, but at the same time, it's Shieldbot Factory. We aren't seeing any Racketeers right now, but... I mean, we could... I don't think we will, though. I think Racketeers have... They've fallen out of favor, to a great extent. I feel like the Rogue's going to be the better option here. Just to get rid of everything. And it looks like that's exactly the case. Ooh. But Rogues are murdered by Grizzly... Uh, by, uh, yeah, by the Grizzlies. That's and, uh, fair. I'm thinking more they're going to be useful against the Cyclopses. But, I yeah, think it's... Drone is going to kill it here. 
The, the Grizzlies are amazing. That could very well be. It looks like the Cyclopses are the main liability right now, but at this point, yeah, the Grizzlies coming in here, and there's, again, one more under production. And Thunderbird's on top of that. That's the bigger thing for me. There's a Thunderbird being produced. Once that's built, yeah, Rar's going to have a very tough time. Even with the Anglers here, it's going to be difficult to hold the line. Yeah. Drone today said something to the effect that uh, they don't want to make Thunderbirds. So if they do make it, it's because they do feel, you know, threatened. Yeah, they have to. But I don't think a Thunderbird is, is good here because there's no follow. Uh, like, nothing to follow. Everything is very, very slow in Rar's. Um, I think the idea is that if you if Rar were to push in, the Thunderbird would stop it, and it's forcing Rar to push back a little bit. Like, Rar cannot move in as strongly as they'd like to, because the Thunderbird would cripple half their army in the middle of the fight. Which means that, while there might not be a follow-up for speed, if Rar's in the middle of a battle with Drone's forces, that Thunderbird will turn the tide. Oh, wow. That is a lot of Constructors. Oh yeah, wow, that is a lot of construction. All the welders here. At the same time, though, Drone is going to be losing a fair bit in this top side. A lot of construction down there, but a lot of skirmishes up top with some anti-air this time, just to make sure that Harpies cannot deal with them. Although, Thunderbirds... Are you going to try to deal with them? You going for it? No. Nope. So actually, Drone's going to lose a fair bit of their economy, but I think they're fine with that. They have gotten about 20,000 or 16,000 metal worth of units in the front lines. They have a very strong army to work with. I don't think they're too worried about having a super strong economy anymore. They've they've taken the advantage of that now. They've made reasonably the most of it. Ooh. And now we have the ducks coming. Probably to take oh, yeah. care of. Yeah, get rid of those skirmishers. Get rid of the felons. Not the felons, the rogues. They cannot take care of rogues. Um, ducks are counted by rogues. Oh, but you're right. Yeah. They can take care of things that were thunderbirded. Right. That is a very good point. And not only that, it's also caused a bit of a split in the army. At this point, Rar, half their army, half the Grizzlies is over on the side. And while that is on the side that's close to the Ducks and not in the side that got Thunderbirded, still a bit of an awkward situation. Of course, the Ducks can't fire underwater. Grizzlies cannot fire underwater. This entire nice, army of nice, Amphib nice. units from Rar cannot do anything unless they get out of this pit. Like, the Grizzlies this have to get out of there. Very smart. Yeah, for those of you not familiar, Anthem units heal very fast in the water. They heal like plus 40, plus 40 health per second in the water. But ducks have torpedoes. Grizzlies do not. So very nicely done by Drone, just to make it so that these units cannot heal from Rar. That could very well turn things around. I mean, the ducks, now they're above water, there is... Like I said, they have the rogues deal, that'll deal with them. Grizzly can't really do much, but yeah, the rogues can deal with them. But that does also mean the army's been split, and that means Drone can put far more metal value to bear on this front line and break it with Rar doing everything he can to push things back. Still managing to hold the line reasonably well, but it's going to be a bit of a problem, especially when additional Thunderbirds are likely to come in any time now. Not to mention again that economy uh, advantage in Drone's favor. In the northwest, Ravens destroyed everything that Rar had. Um, so now it is only the... Middle army, I think, and the old Grizzly in the east. Yeah, and of course the stuff in the back, but it's fine. And anti nuke just in case, huh? They're, I guess they figure drone has so much money they might go for a silencer. <laughs> I mean, it's not happening, but it's not necessarily not going to happen. I still wouldn't expect a full nuke, though. I'd expect I'd expect tactical. But even then, tactical is kind of out of meta at this level. I'm not sure, sure why Rar went for that. Neat, though. Drone does have a moho, so um, advanced geothermal. Um, True. I mean, they can't afford it. They could have a silencer if they wanted to. I just don't expect them to go for that because that's nobody goes for that. That's not a thing you build in one v one. It's not a done thing. You could do it. It's just so rarely happening that I, I'm kind of curious where Rar is getting the idea that it's going to happen. But hey, if it does happen, Rar is prepared. Of course, at this point, the problem is more so that Rar is going to be attacking the sides. These ducks managing to get through, possibly get rid of some of the grizzlies, although there's still a reasonable force to stop them, but these ravens making it difficult. Oh, but even having a harder time, the anglers able to get rid of two of them for very little cost on their part. But at this point, Rar is still managing to hold off. Their attrition has been really good in favor of Rar. Like, amazing in favor of Rar. It's a 20,000 like 20, metal advantage for Rar by attrition alone. So, despite the economy advantage, Rar has been holding on very well. 
At this point, I would like to see them escalate, though. Like, not just anti-nuke. Like, seeing in the chat people suggesting going for some striders might not be a bad idea. Grizzlies do cover that role reasonably well, however, but... Ultimatums. Yeah. Or... Ultimatums. Oh, yeah, that would be perfect, because that would just Jeez. wipe out all the Cyclopses and Grizzlies. That would be the ideal thing to do. Actually, if you line it up properly, you could get rid of all of them at once. But I don't see anyone doing that. I do not expect that at all, actually. I don't know if they're thinking about that. I feel like they've got to be, but yeah, I don't know. That seems like a thing that's just not done right now. Ultimatums are very, very nice against Grizzly because of the really slow um, response time. The long reload time. Right. Yeah, that's the thing. And that's... And even then, like, again, they're also a very strong unit. They just deal a bunch of damage. If you line it up, and Drone has often had their units lined up, that's a perfect situation for the ultimatum to just fire their D-gun, wipe out everything in a row. And there it goes. A few dead Cyclopses, a few dead Grizzlies, and you're done. At the same time, though, we are coming in with a lot of Ducks. Those Ducks, I think, are the decision maker here. They will be able to get rid of a few Grizzlies on their own. And while the Grizzlies have been doing a fine job getting rid of the Cyclopses and some of Drone's Grizzlies, Rar could very well lose them, and more importantly, lose the Anglers and lose the Vandals leaving everything open for Thunderbirding. But hey, there's a Grizzly down thanks to those ducks. So that is that is still huge. Rar is still losing quite a bit, and Drone, they're not quite evening out the attrition advantage yet, but again, Drone just have, has such a strong economy relative to Rar that that attrition is what's keeping Rar in the game, not making Rar win. Oh, you want a Jin. We now have two Jins. Have a, a few Jins. Four, oh. actually. No idea we why. Do? Oh, well, I, yes. I don't see them. In the uh, middle right, middle. I... Just below the radar plane. What? I don't <laughs> see it. I don't know why I'm having a hard time watching. Oh, no, never this, mind. But... Maybe. We'll... Wait, are they drones or are they? Oh yeah, they're drones. I see them now. Yeah, drones. Oh yeah. Although, I, yeah, I don't know where they're teleporting to. Cause that would be a that would be a bad idea to teleport inside of the base, but yeah, it doesn't look like there's. Normally, you see Jins used as a way of moving units to the front line really fast, especially mo units like Grizzlies. So you have, True. you know, you want them in the main base and the teleport beacon up front, or other way around actually. But I don't know where the teleport beacon is. If they're even, I don't think they're even set up actually. Maybe they were mace click. I don't know. Could be, but again, like with what drone is doing, it would actually make a lot of sense to teleport the Grizzlies up front, have them get to the front lines faster, and reinforce faster. Because right now, RAR has a much stronger front line as a result of just having their units already in place. Drone could counter that with the Jins, but they aren't using it for that purpose. However, they do have the Ravens, so at least there's something to counter. It's just not sure. what they've already built. Drone is insane amounts of economy, and I'm not sure where everything is going. It's going to die. Like I said, RAR has managed to keep that attrition up and actually slightly increase. Like, RAR has been... Or Drone's been playing this, like, battle, balance annihilation rather than 0k for the amount of damage they've <laughs> dealt. And their army value is actually less than RAR's right now. Despite the economic advantage, just because of attrition, RAR has 2,000 metal more in their army than Drone does. But they have so many stingers. Like, just, like, select all stingers and see how they line. True. Yeah, that's, like, 5,000 metal worth of defenses. So that's, that's fair, yes. I mean, Drone's ahead that way, but army value... Army value is still RAR's advantage right now. And it's pretty big. And it's growing, too. Like, that attrition has been working out really well for RAR. It's just a matter of figuring out when to use it best. But, man, RAR is... RAR is a tough nut to crack right now. I mean, gee, seriously, it's, what is this going on? RAR! How are you still alive? Rather, how are you not managing to push in? I mean, I guess you can't really push in yet because there's so much defenses. That, that is a bit of a stalemate issue. And it really, this is where you start to see Striders or Nukes or whatever else. And there's Strider coming in. Scorpion coming in from Drone. Drone, the first to escalate here. Which does not really surprise me. They do have the stronger economy. They, they have no reason not to. And that Scorpion is going to mean that's a lot of EMP coming in to the RAR frontline that could very well destroy RAR's frontline if Drone has the follow-ups. Which they don't have a whole lot of, and they have the Grizzlies. But again, this is where Grizzlies might just end up dying. I mean, Rar's coming in here trying to get rid of some of these Stingers, trying to get rid of some of the Grizzlies, and it looks like that could very well happen. And the Stingers here are very likely to go down here. And that's. Is that even at the cost of a Grizzly for Rar? It looks like Rar's gonna be able to pull back, keep those Grizzlies alive. I and mean, it's right in the middle of the river, too, so the Grizzlies can auto heal a little bit. 
Really great advantage coming in for Rar. Managing to get through all those stingers. Thunderbird managed to get in. That does get rid of a couple of the Grizzlies, or at least force them to retreat. But hey, there's still much more in the, where that came from. Rar has enough of a force that not much follow-up can be found for Drone. So maybe this one point, Grizzly is going to die. I'm not sure. Maybe. Maybe no. this Grizzly up here will die. But no, it's gotten out of range. And cannot be hit. So, no, the Grizzly survives. Thank, unfortunately, there's not any repairing Indeed happening. Is. There's conscious available to repair. They're just not doing that job. Of course, at the same time, that Scorpion is up. I th just need to see it, what it does. Because, again, that can stun in. That, that along with the Thunderbird could completely stun out the entire army of RAR. And at that point, army value wouldn't even matter. Actually, at this point, it's even, too. That, that Scorpion alone evening out the army value. So if that goes down, that could be huge, but... Oh, it's not even going for the front line. It's going around the back. It's going to try to get rid of these Threshers and then open everything up for the Ravens to get in and start tearing apart everything in the back lines. This is or possible that appears to be the direction. The base. Yeah, I think it's a spider. Having a spider on the base can really ruin your life. Maybe. I mean, that's, that's what Drone's thinking, clearly. Get in the back lines, tear it apart. I mean, that would mean that RAR cannot produce the armies they've been using to get in this game and stay ahead. But... At the same time, it's just a matter of whether or not RAR is able to catch that, which I don't know. They, they will lose a couple Threshers in the process. There are Ravens... No, there aren't. There's one Raven. There's a Raven, so there's not a whole lot of follow-up if the Threshers go down. But that's not something that... I think that, it's that just fixed. killing it. Just coming and killing the base. Oh, alone not even coming with follow-up, you think? Just Scorpion yeah. on base? Could be. I mean, RAR not going for the back line. Not retreating, though. They're staying in the front lines. They figured, you know, if they go back, the Scorpion's going to just wreck everything. Or the Scorpion's going to distract them, and then they're going to lose their front line, and the drone's going to win. So I kind of get that. It's not a bad choice, but at the same time, it's really a bit of a checkmate situation, because drone, they have the Scorpion in the back line. They still have a strong front line, and there's not much available to get rid of that Scorpion from RAR. They're trying. They got the pillagers. They got the rogues, but the Scorpion's got 12,000 HP. It's going to be tough to get through. Yeah, the Grizz can kill it. Now, it's 1,500 damage every 10 seconds or so. It's not... It's not terrible. It's not ideal. But it does at least force it back. Oh, and actually, on top of that, they have the pillars in the back line as well. So there's something. That's 600 damage each. So, no, this this Scorpion could very well go down. And that's a lot of metal put into Rar's base. Despite the fact that Rar is losing all their energy built up over the, over the beach down here. If they don't lose the Stardust, everything is still fine. The Stardust are holding the line here. If that stays alive, and indeed that does, that means the Scorpion is now just food for RAR's economy engine. And at the same time, the front line is still up. However, nice cloaking, nice use of an Iris here. Or Cornea, rather. Iris is the mobile version. Nice use of a Cornea here to make sure it's harder for the Grizzlies and to get targeted. RAR cannot get through this. Check the Desolator. Oh yeah, and the Desolator, of course, has also its own thing. That's, that's going to be a bit of a problem. And that means the Grizzlies cannot get in here, and Drone has essentially fully defended this firebase up front. So unless Rar tries to go around the back with some kind of infiltration force, I don't see that happening. And even then, what could they do with that? That would be split up. Like, I don't see at this point how Rar gets back in here, just given Drone's strong economy. Like, and they're going for... They're going for s tactical nuke subs. I mean, this is <laughs> oh a water God, map. This is going to be amazing. <laughs> this is a water map. We actually haven't seen a whole lot of use of the water. Despite the fact that there's ocean everywhere, you can build ships. You can send them around the map. I mean, it will be spotted by the angler, but still, what are you going to do? Is oh, wait, no, 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 no. You can send, like, three ducks and it's going to die. Yeah, but that's... Okay, that's a tactical nuke sub. It's not It's not a strategic nuke sub. So the anti-nuke, I don't think, will work. I think the anti-nuke will actually just be nothing. I mean, if it was a reef, it'd be different. But it's not a reef. Um, It did, but... It, oh, wait, no, Reef's like, not nukes seriously? anymore. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Reef doesn't do this anymore. This That's is the right. one that makes big explosions. Well, big-ish explosion if it's tactical nukes. But again, if it's strategic nukes, then we already have the anti-nuke. So, yep. RAR was already one step ahead. Of course, the problem, of course, is the front lines. Like, how do you deal with all this stuff that drone's building up and you can't really break through? Like, honestly, I kind of like to see RAR go over something like that Scylla. Or Skylar or whatever. But I don't even... Or Skillet. I don't know my Greek mythology. But yeah, if go for something like that, maybe? I don't know. Reclaim the Scorpion, turn that into a Strider of their own, turn that into tactical nukes. Something to break through this. 
Because, yeah, that no, Desolator that alone. <laughs> oh, nice choice. Oh, but the nuke's still up, though. They, it could still fire. If drones paying attention, they could still fire off something at the very least to get at least some value off this. And no, they don't. Nothing comes out of this. That Skyla was completely useless. More metal fed to RAR. I'm actually kind of surprised what how that went. What is going on here? I don't understand this game at all. At all. Well, I think neither player is really confident they can actually break through their opponents. And so, at this point, Drone's just trying to push through while holding the line, and RAR can't really push through at this point because the Desolator and the sheer amount of Grizzlies, especially the amount of cloaked Grizzlies, they can't target them in the meantime. So, RAR can't get in. Drone can't really get in. Like, it's kind of become a stalemate. That doesn't usually happen in this game, but... Yeah, neither player is wanting to seed anything, and neither player is going for super heavy, anti-heavy destruction. Oh, but never mind, there's the ultimatum! There's the ultimatum we wanted to see. Drone is going for that. That could very well turn things around. That gets rid of enough of the Grizzlies, then rar has got nothing. Even with the Shogun coming in here and having to turn back, because it's gonna be another metal delivery, as the as Sagaro says. But this time, it has a lot of hunters coming to guard it. That's true. That could stop the ducks somewhat. Although, there's so many ducks that I don't think it's going to necessarily stop them. I think the real key is going to be that ultimatum. Like, gotta watch what that ultimatum does. Because whatever it does, that is going to be what actually wins the game. Although, going for a single grizzly. Not going for the line of grizzlies. Not going up in the front lines to tear apart everything here. Although, I guess it doesn't really matter. At this point, it's actually okay. And you're right, never mind, there, there are enough hunters. These ducks do not have a chance. So, yeah, with that support, that's going to be enough for the Shogun to get in and actually deal some damage. So, yeah, Rara's front line kind of getting broken. Drones, economy advantage, doing this job, though. Ducks coming to harass to at least try to stop some of the economy advantage, making Rar at least have some theoretical chance. But, yeah, it's getting harder and harder every fight for that to work. Even though every time Drone gets out of the range of their defenses, they start losing Grizzlies or losing Cyclopses. I'm still trying to figure what what's going on in this game. It is well, a weird game. It is a weird game. Although one of the Grizzlies does go down, at least the ultimatum did do its job somewhat. And the Shogun finding some value. A lot of value, actually. Should be able to get to the back of the base and not have much in the way of actual competition. Oh. Shogun is insane in the amount of barrels that it has. It's just like... Six barrels. Six whole barrels. Actually, not, yeah, no other game really has that kind nine, of... Nine, nine? I think. No. Nine. Oh, yeah, you're right. Three in yeah. the front and six in the back. You're right. Oh, boy, that's going to be tricky. I mean, that's more or less, you know, a proper battleship. But those are expensive in this game. You don't get those very often. And the Dante in the front lines, because why not? I mean, if you're going to go for Striders, you got to have a Dante at some point. It's practically required. Someone in the chat said earlier that Dante is very, very good to get rid of the older skirmishes. Basically, with the dig and... It yeah, just burn burning. them all. It's a fair point. At this point, it looks like the Shogun is going to be the real key here. And the Dante already in the front lines as well, just to break through. Once the Stardusts are gone, I mean, there's not much going to stop them to get in the main base and destroy everything. So from there, we basically got Rar possibly getting destroyed here. I mean, hunters around the side, just to make sure a Drone does not have to worry about any ducks. As they're able to get in the main base, they should be able to start hitting the factory. I don't know if, if Drone can actually see that main base, though. No, they can't. They can probably blind fire target it, but they can't actually see it. Unless the Dante gets in and starts supporting that. Well, I mean, they got a bunch of artillery set up that could actually work really well. It's just a matter of getting that artillery set up. While at the same time, Drone managing to hold the front line well enough, meaning Rar cannot push in. But Rar can't retreat either, because every time Rar retreats, that's more front line that Drone is able to claim and reclaim and then build defenses on. And that will be basically it, unless Rar is able to hold that front line and maybe get rid of everything in the back. The Shogun, at the very least, is not attacking blind fire. I don't know why. Pretty sure it could actually blind fire in there, but not going for it. There we go. There's that blind fire shot. Oh, never mind. Nice terraforming. Good terraforming work from Rar here. Not sure if that's predictive or not, but good choice either way. It may be able to fire through. Uh, oh, never mind. It found um, it found a path. It found load. a path into the factory. Yep. There's a high trajectory. Yes, and that's thing. currently what's being done. If you look, the trajectory is currently toggled to high trajectory. And that is working reasonably well, actually. 
Now, at the same time, Drone is managing to hold off on the sides. So, they're flanking it on both sides. Rar, they have that front line, and they're going for it. They can see if they can possibly break through, but that Desolator is going to make it not very easy at all. I mean, it's worth a shot, as the back lines are being torn apart by the Shogun. I mean, that Shieldbot Factory is getting heavily damaged. Two Dantes as well closing in. I don't know what Rar really has up their sleeve, because at this point, they haven't been building much to actually counter any of this stuff. No Racketeers or any other special unit. They've just got army. They've just got damage values. And that's about it. When you're dealing with two Dantes and a Shogun, I don't expect that to last too long. thing is that the army is also... It's, it's, it cannot really break anything in the strong point. There, there is nothing that can actually beat the Desolator. Um, Rar, for a while, just tried to survive rather than change oh, how things are. Yeah. Also, correction of the last thing, I realized, no, you're right, the, the low trajectory, I haven't really used this much, so I didn't realize low trajectory, it's set to low, and you clicked it again to be set to high. I thought it was, like, it was active, it was hot, it was low, and it was inactive, it was high. But I just haven't seen it when it's activated. Anyway, my bad. But yeah, at this point, Rar losing their main base, I mean, they did Valiant Defense for, like, 30 minutes, because we got into the 10-minute mark, and at that point, the middle of the map was pretty well still drones, and Rar managed to push back reasonably well and essentially hold the line in the center, but Drone did not let them get past that center point. And from there, that was pretty much game. Rar holding on extremely efficiently. I will grant them that. they like, Their army value, for the most part, was even with Drone, despite Drone's massive economy advantage. Like, two-fold economy advantage the entire game. And Rar was still able to hold on the army, just by attrition. So still, well Both done to Rar from a tactical good. perspective. Somehow both both Dantes died. Yeah, like I said, Rar has been really good at actually keeping things alive. Those Grizzlies have been doing a fine job there. But at this point, we've got we've got so many envoys, as well as the Shogun. I mean, there's this is too much. That's nine envoys right here. That's 18 barrels on its own. On top of the Shogun, that's 27 barrels of artillery goodness firing onto Rar's base. I don't see that working especially poorly for for drone. I think they've got this. But it's a matter of whether or not they actually do, because Rar is not throwing in the towel, that's for sure. They're still in this. They still think they have a chance somehow. I'm not sure they realize that they are dealing with such a huge economic disparity, but... I mean, their commander's still alive, if nothing else. Which, actually, surprisingly, has not been upgraded much until just now. His commander's been around this entire time. He's been reclaiming a little bit and not much else. That's all it's really been doing. For Rar, that is actually kind of surprising. I think that for a while, Rar has um, considered this game lost. I did a thing in tournaments that you don't resign as long as there is some slim chance of victory. Like, True, at the especially moment, single all elimination. The, with all the reclaim, it seems like theoretically there's something. And there it is. There's the GG. Drone finally winning after being probably quite drained mentally by Rar. The last little dish, last ditch effort from Rar to make Drone have a bit of a harder time in the tournament overall, because it's like, yeah, we'll do that. Anyway, that is going to be, that's going to be that round, so I'm going to be moving, I'm going to be taking a short break before the next round, because I kind of need to get more water. And I think we all kind of need a bit of a break right now, so I'll take a short break, <laughs> and then we'll get back to the semifinals, which I believe is going to be, well, we have Drone beating Rar, so that was a thing, and then we have... 400 in shocks. I'm not sure we won that. And Gota still has to go up against the winner of Lolly GXP and N2. Dude, seriously, is that right? Yeah, that's right. Huh. All right. Well, anyway, we do have at least one of the semifinals close to ready. I'm not sure when this Lolly GXP N2 match is going to happen. I think it might just not happen. Well, at any rate, be back in a second, but short break for now. <laughs> 